hey guys welcome back to my channel so i wanted to do a review on the show run the world it comes on sunday nights on the stars channel and basically it is for black women you know dealing with their friendship their relationship their careers and they're just all trying to navigate through it all together basically it's it's kind of giving you waiting to exhale a little bit of waiting to exhale with a sprinkle of living single um with a dash of girlfriends and a little bit of sex in the city all in one and um yeah it is this is the first episode first season now we're gonna jump right on into it oh let me start off by saying all of the women are absolutely beautiful, especially Ella. Ella's the one with the shaved head, with the short haircut. Gorgeous! Oh my gosh, she is so gorgeous. But they're all they're all beautiful. Um. Anyway, so let's just get right on into it. If you see me looking down, I have my little notes. So they start off at a restaurant, and <laughs> Whitney is getting married. So you have. Ella, Renee, Sandy, and Whitney. Whit Whitney is getting married. So <laughs> she has them. They're sitting at the table, you know, stuffing envelopes, her invitations to send out for her wedding. So they, they talk a little bit about the wedding. She is just like having a moment because it's overwhelming. She's talking about basically how her mom, his family, everybody's taking over the wedding and it's all about who they want to invite. Then she started talking about um, the tribal garb that she has to wear um, for his culture and talking about the food. So she's just, she's having a moment, you know, she's, she's a little overwhelmed with, with all of that. Um, that scene literally was like a minute so it it goes into Ella at home. Basically, she's overslept. It's her first day of work. And Renee calls her, wakes her up. She basically calls her to wish her, you know, a, a good first day at work. And um, it's so funny because Renee, the, the scene where she's um, at the bodega and this pink lady... Is like stepping in front of her, reaching across her, and she's like, "Oh, sure, don't, don't, you know, don't mind me. Go, go right on ahead." And y'all, that is a pet peeve of mine. I hate when I am in a store or I'm anywhere, and somebody either walks past me and don't say excuse me, or they they walk and they stop in front of me and they start looking at the shelf or whatever it is without saying excuse me. And it's, it's mainly pink people that does that. But anyway, I digress. And I can relate because I'm famous for saying, oh, yeah, sure, don't don't mind me. Never mind that I'm standing here. You know, you go right on ahead. I have all the time in the world. By all means, you you go right on ahead and, and do your shopping. You know, and sometimes they'll, sometimes, I mean, I've been ignored. <laughs> and sometimes they'll smile and, oh, I'm so sorry about, like, you saw me standing there. Okay, it's not about me. Anyway, so she says that, and I had to laugh because I'm like, yes, I totally understand. So Ella, she she jumps up. She's, you know, jumping in the shower. She's trying to rush to get to work. So she gets to work, and she meets with her boss, Barb. Barb is played by Alexand oh, Erica Alexander. She is um, Max from Living Single. I love her. I think she's a great actress. So she gets there. They're talking. Now, I will say that Barb was kind of giving me Max. I, I, I was, I was, now I, I've seen her play other roles. So I know she can switch it up. But th in this scene, she was kind of giving me a little bit of Max. She was. And have not aged a Bit. I don't know how old she is, but she looks good. She looks the same. She does. She has not aged. So anyway, Ella's given an assignment, and her assignment is to interview Soldier Boy. Now, I, okay, I was a little 
confused because I was, I don't think it was mentioned. And I was trying to figure out like, well, well what era are we in? Are, you know, because you have shows that come out now, but they are focused on, uh, let's say the nineties or the early two thousands. So I, you know, I didn't know. I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird because I know Soldier Boy. I've heard his songs. You know, I I know him from uh, you know, the drama he's had with his his girlfriend and all of that. And I know he was a pretty hot rapper at one point, but I'm like, I didn't think he was that big to even be mentioned. Uh nowadays and it, i don't know it just it threw me off like i'm i'm from the rap era of um ll cool j salt and pepper mc light Lil kim tupac biggie all of that so not that i thought that they would mention their name it was just weird i'm i'm rambling y'all but it, it just threw me off because i'm like soldier boy like what okay <laughs> so but nonetheless that's who she's supposed to go interview so we moved to Sandy. Okay. <laughs> Sandy is dating a single father. Now, they didn't get into why he's a single father. Like, did the mom pass? Um, do they have shared custody where he the, the little girl lives with him one week and then with the mom the other week? Like they didn't they didn't dwell on that. So we don't know how that came to be hopefully they'll talk about that later on but sandy is dating william and william has a daughter named amari i think that's yeah, amari anyway so we have the scene where sandy is at william's house and she is taking she's going to take amari to dance class so William gives her a check and was like, hey, this is the check for her tuition. Make sure you pay it, whatever. So she gets there and she goes to pay the tuition, which is late. So I'm assuming this is the, the dance school owner. I don't know. But she goes in and the lady is like, oh, well, you know, we usually don't take late payments, but we like Amari. We want her to stay. So we'll make an exception. <laughs> so Sandy gives her the check. She's opening up the book and then she says you know we we have programs for underprivileged children you know basically who can't afford you know the classes and um we can look into getting financial assistance of course that rubs sandy the wrong way so she's like oh no there's there's no need for that like you know I, we don't need that and then the lady says so she hands her a pamphlet she said well sandy's teacher wanted me i mean uh, amari's teacher wanted me to give this to you um and it was about nutrition so Sandy was like for a six-year-old like really we're talking about nutrition and weight and all of that so the the, the lady says well <laughs> yeah you know we 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 wanted to provide this information you know just to kind of make sure that Amari doesn't fall into you know the a situation uh I guess, you know, getting ailments, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity that usually stricken, you know, people of her ethnicity background. That did it. Sandy was like, she snatched the check back and was like, yeah, we're out of here. So she grabs Amari. They, they leave and which leads to an argument with Amari's father, William. So he goes off. He's like, Amari, you know, was saying that you embarrassed her in front of her friends. And, you know, you 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 always do this. Like, it, everything is not a let's, let's go out and march. Everything is not a, a, a black movement. Everything is not, you know, this, this whole civil rights and, you know, up, throwing up your fists. Everything is not that serious. It's not, it doesn't call for that. And um, he was like, you know, have you ever considered maybe she just likes to wear pink shoes, the pink ballet shoes? There was a, a scene earlier where <laughs> Sandy gave Amari some brown um, ballet slippers and she gave a whole spiel about, you know, black girls in ballet, they wear brown um, slippers, not pink, whatever. And so Amari, she didn't wear them. She ended up wearing pink. 
because obviously she wanted to wear pink. She wanted to be like the other girls. And so Sandy was like, you know, it's all fine and good now, but I know eventually those girls are going to remind her that she is different. She's not like them. And she was saying how she just wanted basically to protect her from all of that. And the dad didn't, he didn't, he, it wasn't registering to him. To him, it was like, she's a kid. She's a kid. She's having fun. It's not affecting her. It's not bothering her. So then he comes with the classic line that a lot of, a lot of single parents do. He, he let her know that's his child. And he told Sandy, you overstepped. You know, you went too far like you always do. You need to grow up. Why he say that? So Sandy hit him back with, um, excuse me, because I spend my days taking care of your ass and some other chick's child. <laughs> <laughs> that's as grown up as you can get so basically listen i'm up here playing wifey taking care of you like you my husband no ring no commitment no nothing and i'm taking care of help you take care of your child that i did not give birth to okay so she leaves and goes home she she has her own apartment okay so now we're with ella talking to the girls they're 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 at a club at this point or they're at a restaurant and they're talking about meeting up later on to go to this club to interview Soldier Boy. Okay, so Whitney, Ella, and Renee go to the club to meet to interview Soldier Boy. They get to the club and they, honey, they they're coming down the 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 sidewalk like it's a runway. They they look good. They were strut. They they just knew they was. <laughs> they look good though. So they get to the club. They go upstairs to the VIP section because that's where Soldier Boy is. So they get there and um, Soldier Boy's security would let them in. And she was, she let him know, hey, you know, I'm here from whatever magazine, um, I'm here to interview him. So, at the, and he just wasn't, he wasn't having it. So, at this time, this guy comes past, this Asian guy named Ryan. And apparently, Ryan and Ella used to work together. So, she's like, hey, you know, come on, you know, help us get in to the VIP. And so, he told the security guy, he was like, yeah, you know, they're cool. Let them in. So the security guard goes to the VIP section where um, Soldier Boy is sitting. And I guess Soldier Boy can see them from where he was sitting. <laughs> so the guy comes back and he was like, nah, like y'all not, y'all don't fit the aesthetics, you know, to, to sit in VIP with him. <laughs> Basically saying they look too old. Like y'all just, y'all don't fit it. You know, the look to sit in VIP. So they're like, what? Oh, okay. They leave. They go downstairs. And um, Ella runs into Whitney. She sees Whitney talking to this guy. So Ella walks up and she's like, um, hey, you know, they, they, they knew each other. So she's like, hey. You know, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And um, he's like, oh, you know, hey, Ella, whatever. So he goes to get Whitney a drink. He walks off. So um, Ella was like, do you, you, you do know who that is, right? She's like, no, I don't know. Who is that? Um, Chris, a.k.a. Community Peen. <laughs> she was like, who slept with everybody? So Whitney said, who, like, who? Who does he sleep with? She was like, oh, well, me for one. And he slept with Renee. And some other chick. So she was like, it was good. Like he is it's the bomb. You know, he got it going on, but you don't you don't want to go there. Like, first of all, you're getting married, so don't even do that. And um, she basically told Whitney, like, you you missed your wild phase to be out here doing all of that. Like, sorry, but you missed it. So Whitney, you know, she's already having anxiety and overwhelmed about getting married so she was like 
yeah, apparently I did. You know, I'm I was too busy cooking and cleaning and taking care of and you know having sex with my college boyfriend. Now I'm about to get married, so I missed that whole phase. And so she was like, I don't know if I should be turned off or intrigued by what you just told me about Chris. So anyway, Ella walks off and she runs into an ex-boyfriend. I can't think of his name, but she runs into an ex-boyfriend who apparently the way they were talking, it sounded like he just abruptly just left, like left the country. He didn't call her, didn't tell her whatever. And obviously it bothered her. So she was like, oh, when did you get back in the country? You know, my number's still the same. I haven't heard from you. He apologizes and then Renee shows up. <laughs> so Renee shows up and y'all know how it is when your girl, when your, when your best friend was in a relationship, the guy docked her out. So of course, that's your girl. So you got a problem with that. And so she was like, look, I don't, I, I don't want you, basically, I don't want you talking to my girl. And she was telling Ella, like, look, protect yourself. Don't even, don't even fall for it, whatever it is he's talking about. So she walks off and goes to the bathroom and the ex-boyfriend kisses Ella. And she was all for it. She was accepting. She, you know, was kissing him back. And then she pushed away and she was like, no, like, I don't, I'm not doing this. So she, she leaves. She walks off. She runs into ryan again ryan is the asian guy that was in vip and was trying to get her in to see soldier boy so she runs into him and she was like you know you want to get out of here now i don't know if running into her ex-boyfriend did something to her where she was just like you know like in order to get over what just happened with him i need to i need to you know release some tension so her and ryan go back to his place they're in the bed, things about to go down, but he can't get it up, okay? And as he called it, whiskey dick. So he cannot get it up. They, um, so of course she's frustrated. <laughs> He's embarrassed and she leaves. So she leaves and ends up at Sandy's apartment. Now Sandy is the one that's dating William, the single father. Um, she has her own place, even though she goes over and stays at his house sometimes. So she, Sandy shows, I mean, uh, Ella shows up at her place and Sandy's like, um, yeah, usually to walk of shame, you go back to your own place. But nonetheless, you know, that's a girl. So they, they're, they're talking, she's kind of giving her a pep talk. And so Ella mentioned, you know, I just, I just wanted to stop by. I don't want to be by myself. And also I need to submit the article about Soldier Boy. So she pulls it up, the article up, and I'm like, when did you have time to do this article? Keep in mind, they were at the club, okay? Couldn't get into VIP to even interview, talk to Soldier Boy. So you never talked to him. Then you went from that to Ryan's place to have sex, which didn't happen because he had whiskey dick. Then you leave there and go to Sandy's place. So, like, when did you have time to type up this article? But nonetheless, the article was, was typed up. All she did was add the title. And the title was something along the lines of Soldier Boy Screams Women for v for VIP, which is what happened. Remember, they the security guard was like, nah, he not feeling the way y'all look, so y'all can't come into VIP. So that was the title that she put on the already typed up article. Not a big deal. And she submits it. So within like five minutes, she gets the notification that her article is now trending. And I think there was like one or two comments already on the article. So that she got excited about that. And she's like, yeah, like I'm about to, I'm about to do this. I'm about, to, you know, get big from this article. Like I just submitted it and it's already, you know, gaining traction. So she was, she was happy about that. Um, that was it. That was it. It was, oh no, how can I forget? Whitney. So Whitney, the scene, Whitney's in bed and we see this guy using the bathroom. You know, we, all we see is the back. So we don't know who this is. So he turns around and it's community paying Chris. 
So he he turns around, he comes, he get in the bed. Obviously, things have already went down, okay? They, they didn't show any of that. Then the camera zooms in on Whitney's face. And it is the look of regret. Now, I don't know if it's like, oh, shoot, I cheated on my fiance. Or, oh, shoot, I done slept with community peeing and I didn't use protection. Whatever it was, it was written all over her face. So she obviously regretted sleeping with him. That is it. That's the end of the episode. Now, it's only 30 minutes. Um... Which I didn't, I don't think I knew that ahead of time. It was just after I watched it, I'm like, it's over already? That's only 30 minutes? Okay. Which is not bad. Um, they, there was a lot going on in those 30 minutes. And I prefer 30 minutes of watch worthy scenes versus you having an hour show and you're just throwing everything in there to fill that hour slot so it was okay i don't think it's an issue with it being only 30 minutes it was pretty good um but i do like the set i love the scene i love you know the whole club vibe the scene um the apartments and 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 uh ella's job like i, I love i love all of that so, so whoever picked the 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 scenes and the spots good job um all of the women I like, my two favorites right now is Ella and Renee. Whitney, she's my least favorite right now. And it's just because she just gives me this goofy vibe. I, I wasn't too much feeling her acting. But again, it's only the first episode. So maybe I'll warm up to her later. But other than that, I think it was pretty good. It, it captured my attention. It made me want to continue to watch. Um, Usually a show if i'm not captivated that first episode sometimes depending i may give it a second view but after that if it's not if it's not pulling me in i'm done but this pulled me in i think it's gonna give us now it's listed as a comedy i don't mm, again it's just the first episode so maybe the comedy is gonna come later i didn't really get comedy vibes from it maybe a dramedy i don't know I think it's going to give us a combination of things. I think it's going to pull different, maybe different emotions. Like you're going to laugh a little. You're going to be upset. It's going to make you think and reflect on what you're doing or what you did. Um, and maybe even a little sadness and a little, you know, some tears. I don't know. I just, just from the first episode, I think it's going to be a combination of things. I don't really see this as a comedy, but nonetheless, I like it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing more episodes. If you guys watched it, comment below. Let me know. Did you like it? Do you, you know, if you didn't like it, are you going to give it another episode to fill it out? What are your thoughts about it? And, and, did you like the characters? What did you think about the char characters? Did you think it should be longer than 30 minutes? Like, just let me let me know what you guys think. Um, I really like it. I will continue to watch it and review it. And so that is it. And until next time, take care. <laughs>